If you always wanted to do congressional debate but didn't know where to start, this video is for you. And in this video, we'll go over the do's and do nots of congressional debate while going over the basic, stru uh, basic structure of congressional debate as well. So follow me in going into the do's and do nots. Before we can actually go into the do's and do nots of Congress, we need to understand the somewhat basic structure of congressional debate. First, we have our PO, which is our presiding officer, who we vote into the round before our session begins. Now he's kind of like the captain or the leader who leads the session into debate. Next we're going to have the speakers or the congressional debaters who give speeches uh, for or against a certain topic or certain piece of legislation. Now with that then we have a time frame of questioning. Now questioning can range from anywhere from two minutes to a minute uh, from one minute to two minutes. It just depends on the actual uh, actual speech. But questioning a lot of times is a time frame that allows the speakers to actually portray their confidence in answering and addressing any of our concerns and questions as debaters or as congressmen and women. And then lastly, we top it all off by voting on the piece of legislation by saying whether or not we want this legislation to pass or we don't want it to pass because it's going to ruin the rest of society. So with that, let's go on to the do's and do nots. Do not repeat questions that other congressional debaters have already asked the speaker. It's super boring, super repetitive, and gets nothing done in the session. Also, the judges will think that you didn't listen to the actual speaker during his speech or during the questioning time. So that looks really bad on you at, to the judges who score you at the end of the day or end of the session. Secondly, do not repeat points. Points are, repeating points is not only repetitive again, but super boring again, and judges absolutely hate it. So you'll see that a lot of congressional debaters actually want to move away from this and move on to different topics, or else the debate just gets buried down and becomes a ditch, and then it's a ditch that we all have to climb out of. Third, do not stay on the same legislation or topic for more than 30 minutes to 40 minutes. It gets really boring and repetitive hearing the same arguments over and over again, and for the judges, they absolutely hate it. They want to move on and hear different and new and fresher arguments rather other than the same arguments that keep getting debated on the same legislation for over an hour. That's why we want to try to move on and bring other arguments or other topics into the room. Lastly, don't be a pushover in congressional debate. It's really hard to be confident in yourself if you're a pushover in questioning and in caucus, which we'll go over into in a little bit. But overall, you just need confidence and confidence portrays in your voice, your standing, and how you actually present yourself as a debater. Luckily enough, congressional debate do's are much more straightforward. First, always and always try to be active. If it's your first time doing congressional debate, I know how tough it is giving your first speech ever, but if you can, at least ask questions and remain active within the chamber. It brings a lot of debate and brings new debaters into the actual discussion rather than just sitting there for eight hours and wasting time and energy just sitting there and doing nothing. But secondly, always try to be polite even when you're on stage or what if you're giving a speech out or if you're trying to refute being someone. rude to the person you're refuting doesn't look good on you and in fact judges will actually take note of this and probably will write it on your ballot always try to be polite and make friends you're debating with each other for eight freaking hours try to be polite friendly and make other friends with one another that's how congressional debate friendships start out by being nice while still being assertive and lastly, third, always try to stand out, whether it's asking the most unique questions of all or having the most unique points during that topic discussion. Always try to stand out within congressional debate because it's one against 20 other members. And that judge will always remember that person who stands out the most in their speeches, in questioning, remaining active, who's the most polite while still being assertive. Try to always stand out because that's how you su uh, succeed in congressional debate and that's actually how you have the most fun in con congressional debate as well. 
When you are competing in congressional debate and you enter your chamber or your session in the morning, you'll get something called a placard, or in my case, a note card. Now the placard slash note card will have your last name on it and will be the name that a lot of the POs, the representatives, and maybe even some of the judges will call you by and know you by. So when a lot of times when you want to make a motion, give a speech, or just ask a simple question, you just have to stand up, raise your placard up, and wait to be called on. It's very straightforward, and the PO will recognize you uh, once you stand up and not have you wait. So with that in mind, let's actually go into how to stand up for a speech and what are some tips and strategies to remain active in the session and not be awkwardly congressionally cock-blocked. When you're standing up to give a speech in congressional debate, you always want to be, uh, try to be one of the first few people to give speeches, whether it's the first affirmative or the first negative, or even the second affirmative or negative, try to be the one of the first few people to give speeches, so that way you establish uh, re recency or preference. So that way, when someone stands up to uh, give a speech against you, you have early recency over him, so that way you get a speech over the next person. For example, if I stood up, gave a speech, then Riley stood up and gave a speech, but the next speech we both stand up, I would get that preference over the speech because I have recency over it. So with that, we always try to want to be one of the first one, two, or even three, third person to give speeches, so that way we're not into put into a awkward middle or be congressionally cock blocked, because that really sucks. But next, let's go over some tips and strategies for when you are giving a speech. When you go up to give a speech, look towards the back of the room and look at the judges and always ask something similar to the lines of, and if I can get an indication when my judges are ready. A lot of times the judges will uh, look up at you, give you a nod, or give you a thumbs up, and tell you that they're ready. And that's when you can actually start giving your speech. When you are giving your speech, it's like an extent speech, where you make a diamond or you walk as you're giving your points. So that way, the judges or the other debaters can follow where you're going with it. With that in mind, we can actually go towards and talk more a little bit about the specifications in terms of POs. So when you go up to give your speech, you actually don't get to hold a timer to know where you are in terms of time. This is where multitasking comes in handy, because the PO actually gavels down as your time progresses. For example, if when you get to about 1 minute and 30 seconds, the usually the PO will give you one tap, letting you know that you're at minute 30. Then when you get to 2 minutes, he'll do 2 taps. It just depends on the POs. A lot of the POs have different time variables. It just depends on who you have as a presiding officer. It's always good to ask them beforehand so that way you know or you have an idea uh, where it's going to be at or approximately going to be. Lastly, we're going to go over some questioning time or questioning tips. Always be confident when you're answering questions or giving out questions. And if you have a teammate that's in the same team or room as you, always give them easy or simple questions that they would look good to uh, to the judges. It's called piggybacking and always help each other out, especially when you're in the same Alrighty team. guys, so those are my tips and tricks on how to do Congress and how to be successful in Congress. I wish you guys the best of luck with going into next years and future years, and I hope you guys take these tips into consideration.